when steel was in short supply. But God always has a way that even in the worst of times, even in the worst of conditions, he allows his people to survive. It look like God has uh, somewhat of a rule that says that the more that happens in the earth, the greater I'm going to take care of you. I believe God has incorporated survival skills in the life of every believer. I believe there are survival skills in all of his people. For even when Israel was in bondage in Egypt for 430 years, they yet survived. They may have been discouraged. They may have been beaten up. They may have been treated uh, a little rough around the edges. But yet they survived. Tell your neighbor, you may get discouraged sometimes. But you can still survive. Oh yes, God has made us survivors. And I believe I'm looking at a few survivors right now. I believe there's some folks in here. There are some folks that live here in this area. And then there are some folks who have traveled from great distances to be here. And the devil even told you that you would make it to Memphis. And yet you survived. You defied all the odds. The enemy did everything he could to try to block you, to try to slow you down. But God wanted you to be here. God had something for you. And God didn't bring you this far to forget you. God's got a blessing for you. Tell somebody, God's got a blessing for you. You see, the book of Job is one of those historical books in scripture that teaches us that when one is rooted and grounded in God that survival is possible many people think Job is just a character made up in scripture but I see Job as a real man the question is asked why do the righteous suffer Job didn't do anything wrong He's a character in scripture that is worthy of our examination. He is wealthy in earthly goods, and yet he is spiritual. Now that by itself is something for us to investigate. Because so many people forget God when they arrive. Uh, when they think they have gotten to where God wants them to be when they think their connections and their finance and who they know have gotten them into high places. They tend to forget the God that brought them there. If you ask any saint who have been in this church for a length of years, for 50, 60, 70 years, they can tell you, I remember how it used to be and I see how it is now. It used to be a time when people stayed on fire for God. And now we got to work folks up. But when God has really done something for you, every time you come in here, you ought to be worked up. Every time you can come in the house of God, you ought to be stirred up. You shouldn't need anybody to stir you up. There ought to be a fire down on the inside that tells you I'm going to make it anyway. A whole lot of people forget God. When they didn't have anything, they begged God. And then when they received a few things, they forgot God. God warned Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 6, When I bring you into the land, which I swear unto thy fathers, to give you great and goodly cities, which you did not build, when I put you in houses full of all good things. Oh my Lord. When I give you wells that you didn't dig. When I put you and give you vineyards and olive trees that you didn't plant. When you have eaten and become full. Then beware. Lest thou forget. 
the Lord which brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. He wanted Israel to know when you get into the land of milk and honey, when you get into the promised land, when God takes you from height to height and glory to glory, don't you dare forget that it is the God of your salvation that brought you this far. That's why your faith has to always be on ready. Your faith has to be on point. You can't allow your faith to diminish even when the economy is going down. You can't allow your faith to fall apart even what they are saying on CNN and when you pick up the newspaper. You can't allow that to scare you. Your faith in God ought to see you through. Job is successful materialistically. He's got it going on. I mean, if we were to use our vernacular, we would say Job has it going on. We would say Job is the man. God himself honors Job. Job from the land of us, somewhere between Edom, oh my God, and Saudi Arabia. The land of us, and the Bible said that he is an upright man. He is a moral man. He's successful materialistically. But yet, he is pious. He yet has a reverence for God. He is referred to as a perfect man, a blameless man. It doesn't mean that Job was infallible. It doesn't mean that Job was sinless, but it means that Job was blameless. He did everything he could to keep himself right. He didn't worry about straightening everybody else out. He worried about straightening himself out. You got too many, oh Lord, I bet, I bet not go there. You, you got too many folks straightening everybody else out and they need to look at the man in the mirror. And I'm not promoting Michael Jackson either. They need to look at the man in the mirror. He's upright before God, a man of integrity. He fears God and he eschews stays away, avoids evil. He does not want to do anything to jeopardize his relationship with the Lord. We need more men, we need more women who value their relationship with God and will not do anything to jeopardize their relationship with God. We need more women. We need more men that will trust God with everything inside of them. We need more people that's not interested in silver and gold and not interested in things. And now let me straighten you out for a moment. Don't go over here and talk about the preacher said we can't have things. No, Jesus himself said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. He doesn't mind you having things, but he don't want things to have you. Hallelujah. He doesn't mind you having things in your life, but don't let the things destroy your relationship. For what if it profited a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? So God is good to Job. He blesses him with a large family, gives him seven sons and three daughters. And after a great feast with his family, he begins to be the priest. He follows the Jewish custom of the day. And the father becomes the priest of the family. He says, it may be that my children have sinned because while they were in the house eating and drinking, they didn't have the same consecration that Job had. And he said, it may be that they have sinned. And what a blessing it is to have a prayer warrior in your house, in your family. Don't you know that prayer will fix it every time? Prayer will change things. If you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. Somebody pray for you, had you on their mind, took a little time, and they prayed for you. He prayed in the home, and God noticed the faithfulness of Job. But not only did God notice the faithfulness of Job, but the devil noticed the faithfulness of Job too.